now we're going to turn to an important warning as we head into spring. Because of the warm weather, these nasty, dangerous ticks, they are back, and they're back earlier than usual this year. So we've got our senior medical uh, correspondent, Dr. John Torres, here to talk about why it is so important to protect ourselves. Doc, it's good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Welcome back. Okay, so, so we're warned about ticks every year, uh, but how dangerous are they, and why are the warnings a little more dire and this Ticks, year? unfortunately, can be very dangerous. They can give you lifelong illnesses. Everyone's heard about Lyme disease. But you can actually die from some of the tick illnesses that are out there. Rocky Mountain spotted fever is one of the more fatal tick diseases you can have, and it's really hard to detect. Problem is, right now we're in tick season. Ticks are most active in the spring and the fall, but depending where you live, spring and fall varies. You know, some sure. places it's early, some places it's late. And so you have to be careful throughout the whole time period. And one thing we found out is ticks are spreading more, they're becoming more abundant, and the diseases they carry are spreading more as well throughout the uh, country. So uh. you have to be careful. So talking about those diseases, we know Lyme's disease is up about 44%. There's this other one, babesiosis. Babesiosis. Bab babesiosis. What is that? I mean, what are symptoms that people people might get that they could perhaps link back to a tick. And so the biggest ones are Lyme disease, babesiosis, and then Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And they all essentially start the same. You start getting fevers, you start getting muscle aches, joint pains, and then they start deviating a little bit. With Lyme disease, you can get this red target lesion, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the telltale lesion. Don't always have to get it, but you can get it with that one. With babesiosis, you tend to get really high spiky fevers, and that's the thing with that. And with Rocky Mountain spotted fever, you get this plaque-like rash, they call it, and it's mm -hmm. usually around your wrists or mm -hmm. your joint areas. Mm -hmm. And so you just want to be careful. If you find a tick and you have these symptoms, definitely go get checked. But if you don't find a tick and you still start seeing these symptoms, then you want to go ahead and get checked here. Well, you're such a giver, so you brought some ticks. <laughs> you brought these are not alive. They're some not alive. I have to be honest oh, with you. These are, these are dead, luckily. That's a pain. I thought that it would be like the size of a, maybe a little smaller than a ladybug, but that really tiny one that, right there, really how would you one. find that yeah, in your that, sock? That really tiny one is a nymph, and it's a little baby tick, and oh. so those are the ones that cause the most problems. Because really? Because they're really hard to find. Oh, yeah. And so you I mean, want to make sure you avoid them, number one, and number two, you constantly check yourself and your pets because it's yeah. important. Your pets could easily bring this in. Yeah. They could get off your pet onto a couch, get onto you when you sit on the couch. So mm -hmm. you want to be extra careful, especially if you're out in the environment. Mm -hmm. And the, the things, you know, long grass, yeah. you want to stay on the trail, avoid long grass, bushwhacking. Wear long, long, long pants, yeah. long sleeves. And you wouldn't feel it, like if it's in your sock or something like that. No, the, well, you can imagine that little nymph, you're not going to feel anything yeah. there because it's so small. I yeah. mean, over the years, Dr. John, I've heard of folks using fire when I was growing up. That was one of the <laughs> old wives' tales. Not while it's still attached. Yeah, no, no, they no. would. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? You do right yeah. up on there. Oh, yeah, just hold still, boy. Hold still. Is there a better way? Is there a better way? Yeah, there's got to be a better way. So they, used to do, they used to do fire, heat, <laughs> oil, oil polish, anything, yeah. nail polish, any of those things. Those don't work all that well. The best way to do it is simply use tweezers to go ahead and pull it out. But you want to be careful. When you use the tweezers, you don't want to squeeze the stomach, which is the back part. Oh you want to get it down towards the head like that. And then just gently pull it out. And the biggest question I get is, what if some of the parts stay in there, like some of the mouth parts or anything like that. If you can easily get those out, fine. If not, the CDC says just leave them there. They're going to really? heal. Your body's going to digest them. Not a problem with that. But avoiding ticks is important, too, and that means making sure that you use DEET, use uh, picaridin, which is another tick-type repellent, insect repellent, long sleeves, long pants, like you said, tuck, tuck your pants into your socks. It's a really we, fashionable we looking way. We last year came back right? from a beach day and found a tick. Right. I mean, it's, it's, well, the other like important it's thing not is just walking through the woods. Constantly checking. Anytime you're mm -hmm. outside, when you come back in, check. check. And check right. those areas that mm. you normally don't check because right. it could be there. Dr. Yeah. John, thanks so you much. You can take your ticks back now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> also want to thank the eco epidemiologist. Epidemiology. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. At Columbia University. It's very helpful to have that. You realize how tiny they are. Thank you, Dr. Torres. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.